Yeah, good morning, everybody, and I appreciate you for being here. Uh, for any of the media folks that may be here, my name is uh, Rich Anderson with an SON, and I am the delegate from the 51st House District, which runs from Occoquan up through this area, but just south of the airport. The airport is actually represented by Delegate Jackson Miller. I'm just like at the airport boundaries and then out through Noakesville. So thanks for being here. Um, the reason we wanted to have this press opportunity was to talk about uh, House Bill 1738, which has to do with a uh, sales tax and use exemption for aircraft or aviation uh, parts, instruments, engines, supplies, anything that uh, goes onto an aircraft in the course of its maintenance, which is uh, a very extensive piece of legislation for Virginia, because I think it levels, levels the playing field with competitor states around us who are in fact drawing in uh, aviation business for maintenance in the general aviation sector. By that I mean privately owned aircraft to include corporate uh, aircraft. Uh, the airlines right now have an exemption, but they, these other sectors do not. Um, I'm gonna uh, turn it over in a few minutes to a couple of other folks to talk, um, but I just wanted to introduce a couple of folks. Um, first, we have here Mr. Bud Oakey, uh, who is the Executive Director of VABA, which is the Virginia Aviation Business Association, and here representing today the a national organization known as AOPA, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, which is the premier general aviation uh, national association for pilots and aircraft owners, and that is Andy Williams from their headquarters in Frederick, Maryland, I think is where that is. So thanks for being here. And I also have uh, in the back of the room, Marion Dobbins, who is the executive director of the Manassas campus of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. And my pathway to her happened just a few, less than two weeks ago at the Manassas um, African American Heritage Festival. I walked past an exhibit and there sat uh, Jules Jacob, who's seated next to her, who is a part of her organization. And I saw Aviation Maintenance uh, of America or some other similar banner, which immediately caused me to divert, talk to Jules. And the beauty is um, their organization, like many others across Virginia, I believe will see an upturn in their student enrollments because of this bill which will draw business to Virginia for purposes of economic development in the aircraft maintenance field. Um, and then we also have with us uh, Mayor Hal Parrish of Manassas, uh, especially appropriate for Hal to be out here. Aside from being mayor, he is uh, a private pilot. So he has a chip vested interest in here, I would think. I haven't actually discussed it with him, but I think that he certainly does. So let me just hit a few highlights and then I'm going to turn the podium over to some of these other folks. Um, House Bill 1738 is one that was brought to me by the Virginia Aviation Business Association, the ABA, that Bud Oakey leads. And uh, I thought it was a very important economic development initiative for the Commonwealth of Virginia. I chair what is known as the General Assembly Aviation Caucus, which is a coalition of delegates and senators, both houses, both parties, we're interested in nurturing and growing aviation in the Commonwealth of Virginia. One of the ways that uh, we intend to do this <coughs> is through House Bill 1738. And if I can go back just a little bit further, in 2016, a bill came to the General Assembly, which passed through the House Committee on Science and Technology, which I chaired, and made its way to the governor for signature, and it mandated that an extensive study be done of all aviation and space um, elements in the Commonwealth of Virginia looking to do a better job of harnessing that for purposes of economic development. That study ensued through all of 2016. There is a final report that has been issued. It's very extensive. I have asked wearing another hat that I wear as chairman of the Joint Commission on Technology and Science which meets uh, between General Assembly sessions and essentially does the work of the House Committee on Science and Technology when we're not in session, um, to draft from here the, the recommendations that we come up with a menu of bills. That has been done. Uh, I need to vet those first and uh, take a look at the doability, but then in the 2018 legislative session, we intend to do 
uh, a lot of these things. There were some distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen that did this. The chairman of the, of the whole um, study was a Joe, Thomas Young, who is former director of the Goddard Space Flight Center, COO of Martin Marietta, former chairman of SAIC, and also was the director of the uh, Viking Mars Project, which landed vehicles in the 70s, if you call them Mars. And he brought people of like credentials. So now that we've had this brain power focus, we want to move out. <clears throat> One of the recommendations uh, directly relates to what we did with House Bill 1738. So here's what 1738 does. At the present time, labor is exempted, and you correct me if I misstate anything, labor is exempted from state uh, sales and use tax, maintenance on aircraft. However, the parts that go onto those aircraft are in fact taxed. And what that translates to, and when Bud speaks, Bud will probably cover this, but it translates into a heavy fiscal obligation on the part of pilots who own their own aircraft, single engine aircraft. It is quite expensive, the sales tax portion of, of owning your aircraft and maintaining it. If you own a business jet, um, it is an astronomical cost to replace a multi-million dollar jet engine on one of those aircraft, and so is the tax bill that comes with it. What this will do is align Virginia's tax policy by exempting the parts and engines and other items that go onto the aircraft from sales tax. It aligns us with our neighboring states. Because these other states have this sales tax exemption, aircraft owners will ferry their aircraft to other states for maintenance. And therefore, we don't have the vigorous aircraft maintenance industry in Virginia we should have. This will hopefully do that. The uh, states around us have done phenomenal in this area. Uh, the, in fact, the executive fleet that supports the executive branch of Virginia state government, which consists of two King Airs, goes to Illinois, as I understand it, for its maintenance because it has that exemption. And it stays, saves the Commonwealth of Virginia a considerable amount of money to move these two turbine engine power twin engine aircraft um, to another state for the maintenance. So our desire is to create an atmosphere here where there will be new startups, where there will be other companies who will relocate to Virginia, and where there is a greater need and organizations like the Aircraft Maintenance Organization represented in the back, and I'm gonna want you to say a couple of words too if you could. Um, we're gonna see an upturn in that business, I believe. A lot of this was premised on a study that was done by Price Waterhouse Coopers, probably the most respected accounting firm on the face of the planet. And they estimate that Virginia's $1 billion aviation industry will be considerably impacted to the positive. There are about um, 15, 16,000 people employed in aviation in Virginia. It is expected to increase those jobs exponentially. We crafted the bill in such a way that it would be effective. We put on what is known in legislative parlance a uh, delayed enactment clause. Uh, normally bills would become effective, this bill would become effective on the 1st of July of this year. We did a delayed enactment to make it effective the 1st of July 2018 to give us some time because as you know, we had a revenue shortfall in the last fiscal year and we needed to deal with that. So we moved this downstream. It will be effective for four years. It has a sunset clause of July 1st, 2022. And the purpose of that is to let us do a mid-course examination of the bill and to do any sort of mid-course corrections we feel like we need to do. Uh, I think that's fiscally prudent and that's what we intend to do. And so with that, uh, I'd like to turn the podium over uh, next to uh, uh, Mr. Bud Oakey of the Virginia Aviation Business Association. Bud. Thank you, Billy. Uh, the VABA wants to compliment Delegate Anderson, who many of you may not know as an aviator himself, uh, not only retired from a very active life in the uh, United States Air Force, but he's also the past commanding general of the Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol National Commander, uh, who is a very large contributor that people don't understand to 
uh, youth education in aerospace driving a lot of the demand and need we need for future engineers, future pilots, future airport operators and the like. Uh, so he has had an entire lifetime surrounding uh, aviation both uh, from a state standpoint and a national and in the Air Force international standpoint. Uh, the VABA got into this legislation several years ago calling for the study as, as Delegate Anderson mentioned uh, but it shows when, when we say neighboring states that's really not correct. Every state is competitive with Virginia. 36 states in the United States have some form of tax exemption on aviation parts and supplies with 29 having full exemptions as Virginia has gone to. To give you the impact on this and why it's so competitive is the Commonwealth of Virginia is an example with its state fleet goes to Illinois for paint, for avionics, for interior upgrades, for engine overhauls and modifications because corporations like that who use aircraft in their daily business get work done at the same time. So if we're going to do a paint job, we're going to do an avionics job as well. These dollars are big. For a million dollars, you're looking at $50,000 in uh, savings right there that you're competing with. But when these aircraft go up, they're having a million five, two million, two million five, depending on the job. When you're looking at somebody like Altria, Norfolk Southern, Dominion Virginia Power, Dominion Resources today, you're looking at very sizable savings. The competing states that we look at for these aircraft, and if you just look at the quality and caliber of aircraft that is located on this one field in Virginia, and then you look at where those aircraft are going for maintenance up to this point, those are lost jobs that should be in Virginia. Those aircraft are going to Maine, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, Missouri. Appleton, Wisconsin takes most of the Gulf fleet out of Virginia. We got a large number of Gulf aircraft in this state. That's before you get to the 172s, 182s, uh, the, the Cirrus aircraft that are located on this field and used for flight training. This has a effect to everybody who owns an aircraft in Virginia and it's going to create, forget new jobs coming in, which in every state that's implemented this tax exemption has gotten new jobs. And AOP, Andy will speak to that in a second. But this will impact every single bu aviation business positively immediately upon impact. Our goal is get everybody ready for it. It's already having an impact with businesses that have decided to locate in Virginia or acquire Virginia aviation businesses when they were looking at us, one example was looking at Virginia location and a West Virginia location. This law passed and that nailed it because we have a better environment for business and industry already in Virginia, but this made the key factor. So this was a vital element in our economic plan as Virginia's airports as center of economic growth in aviation. And so we thank Delegate Anderson for his efforts. And by the way, we will note it's not coincidental that this press meeting is today as this is now because of the legislation this last year, Virginia Aviation Week every single year, the third week in August. And this is to promote the growth of aviation in Virginia. All right. Thank you, bud. Um, I'd also like to recognize one, I, I failed to recognize you over there, Juan Rivera is here also, who is the director of the Manassas Airport, so thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Next, I'd like to turn the podium over to uh, um, Andy Williams from the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. Thank you. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association would like to thank Delegate Anderson and the Virginia Aviation Business Association for moving this important initiative forward. Uh, Bud really covered it all. I mean, it's, it's not only important to be competitive in your region, and you are. Uh, states like Pennsylvania and New Jersey have similar exemptions. But I know you'll appreciate this. This gives you an edge over Maryland, right? So <laughs> everybody <laughs> likes that. Um, and, and like Bud said, there are dozens of these kinds of exemptions across the United States. Everywhere it's been tried, it's been a massive success. Because uh, the, the truth is, tax incentives 
create jobs. Tax cuts create jobs. Uh, it's it's a truth. It, it, it's 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 succeeded everywhere it's been tried. And uh, really, with that, I'd like to thank you all for being here. Okay, and then the last speaker, I would like to ask uh, Marion Dobbins, who is the campus executive director of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance here in Manassas. So yes. you have the podium. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, Delegate Anderson, on behalf of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance, I want to say thank you for, for uh, getting this bill across and, and helping the Commonwealth of Virginia and those people that are in aviation. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, my name is Marion Dobbins, and I am the executive uh, campus director of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. We're just right down the road a piece. Uh, and it's so interesting because how many of you all have ever flown in an aircraft? Well, we can all say, right? And some of us can even say that we have piloted aircrafts. Well, one of the things that we need when we're talking aviation are mechanics. And that's what we do at the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. We have over 200 students currently who are learning to be aviation maintenance technicians. And we work here alongside of the regional airport here in Manassas. As a matter of fact, Mr. Rivera is part of our, PAC, or our uh, program advisory council who helps us in curriculum and things of that nature. Many of our graduates work here at the Manassas Regional Airport, helping to keep the general aviation aircraft safe for those who fly in it. So on behalf of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance, we are 11 campuses all across the country. There are two here in the state of Virginia. We want to say thank you because this bill will bring an opportunity to change lives. And that's what we do. We change lives by giving people, men and women, an opportunity to have a great career in aviation. And I'm so passionate about it because my husband had been an A&P mechanic before he passed. So I am very committed into making sure that these students get what they need, they become graduates, and they go out into the industry and, and through this bill, uh, be able to even stay in the state of Virginia. Uh, I'm very passionate about the state of Virginia because I'm an eighth generation Northern Virginian. So I, I want to make sure that we have everything that we need, he, need here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, my partner here is my um, corporate, is my uh, community um, outreach representative. And I want to thank him for letting me know about this. Uh, and I want to thank again um, Anderson, uh, Delegate Anderson, for allowing us to come here today and, and talk to you. I encourage all of you to come and have a tour of the Aviation Institute of Maintenance. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Rich, I'd like to add one point to, to, to what Marion just brought up. We have some of the best aviation academic institutions in the country right here in Virginia. Liberty University School of Aeronautics is third largest in the United States and second largest only to Emory University east of the Mississippi. We have Everett University with a very dynamic program. We, we have the Aviation Institute. We have the Denby uh, School of Aeronautics and Denby High School in Norfolk that is promoting kids into aviation degrees. We have two community colleges teaching uh, aviation. Uh, all of these efforts, 100% of either certificated or degreed people who come from these programs are employed. 100%. But less than 5% stay in Virginia. And it's because these jobs are going elsewhere. But there is such a tremendous demand in aviation that each of these academic institutions can be 100% filled right now. We don't have the jobs for them in Virginia and we can't meet the demands nationally. They will stay at home in Virginia if we create the jobs and that's what this entire effort is intended to do and proven to do elsewhere around the country. Okay, well, you've heard from us about uh, what the intent of the bill is. Let me just throw it open to uh, any questions. I think we have a pretty good sampling of experts up here uh, who can answer questions. So with that, yes, sir. How much in tax savings or tax loss would you look at it? I mean, that, uh, the state would not be getting government that's in that. How much uh, will that amount to? 
I cannot remember how tax scored this. Do you? Ta tax has not been able to get because of the way they have accounted for the money in the past. So that range has been anywhere from from a half a million to 1.5 million annually in lost revenue. We will gain more than that in the first year. Now. What we have to gauge that on is the growth in other states, and I have some of that information for you in the media, a gamma report that talks about other states, and I want to know the uh, General Aviation Maintenance Association. Uh, this economic study, you will note on this one key page, does not mention Virginia anywhere, but you can see the competition Virginia has, which is, is it, but it gets into some dollar <coughs> standpoints. Our comparisons have been to the growth in other states, which Maine, if you Google Maine, has been an unbelievable uh, growth job. But you can also get into, and we can supply this information, where in South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, people just move back and forth on the aircraft, but you see the growth statistics. So we've had what other states have done to be able to justify what Virginia is doing. Now we have to prove it. And what we are doing in partnership with the Department, Virginia Department of Aviation, Virginia Airport Operators Council, uh, VABA, uh, and, and the Commonwealth is we're going to collect that information as through the years from stand up starting next year, this time next year, uh, and through the four years before we get to the reenactment. We'll have a good, pretty good history on the growth at that time. Not, o not only in tax dollars generated, but in jobs created and new businesses called, and, and, and thirdly, in, in businesses retained. There's four categories we have there. The, the only thing I would say is, is the bottom line, because of the job and business creation, any loss under the present construct is, is uh, overcome in significant amounts by revenues realized by these new businesses um, and jobs. In fact, Price Waterhouse, here's an excerpt from their study. Aviation supports 17,500 jobs in Virginia, generating $1.05 billion in labor impact. This bill will more than double the existing businesses in Virginia, creating an almost immediate net gain in jobs and capital investment. That's where the offset comes. We have this information for you too. I, I'd love to see it. Um, Thanks so much, guys. Help me, you know, make sure that I'm understanding um, this right. It, as you all see it, sort of, you know, if this bill has its intended effect um, in Virginia, you know, even here in Manassas specifically, you know, what are the sorts of businesses and jobs being created? Would it be the, the folks working specifically in aircraft maintenance? Is that where you're expecting to see the business? Like, like what's coming here if this bill does what's intended? We have a term called MRO, which is. Uh, Maintenance, repair, and overhaul. We have no mate. We have smaller MROs in Virginia. We have no major MROs in Virginia because we're not attractive to them. Okay, Gulfstream is a good example. Gulfstream has uh, MRO facilities in Savannah, in Brunswick, Georgia, in Dallas, Texas, in Appleton, Wisconsin. <coughs> Think about that. What's in Appleton, Wisconsin? Okay in Missouri, in California. There are reasons they have located there, and that's what we're competing with with these aircraft. Appleton, Wisconsin, in a uh, uh, King Air uh, 350, is about a two and a half hour flight from here. So it's not a long way. And it's easy to ferry uh, aircraft or send them back on Delta to, when, once they take the aircraft up there, to sit there for two or three weeks. So the types of jobs, let's talk about the types of jobs. They take that aircraft to Appleton for an engine two engine, because they're gonna get two engine overalls. They're gonna get two engine overalls up there, and so you got all the engine mechanical work. But while they're up there, they're gonna have the paint refreshed, okay? So on, on a Gulf Stream, that's what, about a half a million dollars for a paint refresh, okay? By the way, Virginia is not home to any aircraft paint shops. There's no painting done in Virginia, unless it's just touch up. And that's because that work is done, it's tied in with the other work. All of the interior work is going to occur when the engine work is done, the avionics work is done, the paint work is done. So you've got people who do the interior work, do the paint work, do the engine mechanical work, do the avionics work, are all going to do that work. Now, 
Let's talk about the Jews a G2 as an example. To upgrade a G2, I'm told by Altria, uh, with Wi-Fi is a half a million dollars. They have three. All that work can be done in Virginia. But they tie that into the other work they're doing it, so they just have that done in Appleton. So they're not going to, that maintenance shop isn't necessarily going to have somebody that does the electronics for the Wi-Fi. That's going to be another area of business. Okay? Well, that's in, in, in the Richmond area, that's $1.5 million with one company just lost in business that's gone someplace else. The, the work has been exported. We never created those jobs in the first place. So what we're doing is we're growing that business, we're growing the mechanic business, we're growing the interior business. In Virginia, some of that will be existing businesses, some of that will be new businesses. But it will grow in Virginia because all of a sudden now we're competitive. There is one business on the field here that had done a major overhaul for a company on an aircraft and they hadn't put in their quote that does not include Virginia sales tax on aviation parts. When it went back to the owner of the company, the owner of the company came back and said, wait a minute, that's $50,000 on my work. Stop the work. He stopped the project. And this company had to reduce his price by the sales tax and absorb that in his cost because we weren't competitive. It was example after example after example. When I had a Cherokee 180, I was in Rona. I took it into Maryland because it was nobody competitive in Virginia to do it. It was less expensive for me to fly to Maryland, have some pay for somebody else to fly to Maryland, pick me up and bring me back than it was to have the work done in Virginia. As a perfect example with a small aircraft like you see behind us here. And another area where jobs will be created is the Aviation Institute. Absolutely. Um, where you gotta train these folks. Hopefully they'll train here and not in some other state. And we're yes, not only just uh, training adults, but we are now getting into the schools. Uh, we are getting matriculation agreements with STEM projects. Uh, we have a uh, matriculation agreement between Manassas City Schools where we do jet camps for their 11th and 12th graders to get them interested into aviation to understand the opportunities that are out there. Uh, we also hold jet camps for middle schoolers. So we're even getting out into the community and saying, hey look, this may be an avenue that you want to approach. Uh, we really want to get that out there. So we're excited about working in the community and then also working with you all and getting um, everything in order with this bill and getting our guys out there and gals working. Well, thank you for being here. It was fortunate just to run into you the other day. Thank you. Additional questions? Yeah, um, something else that sort of came into my mind, I mean, you mentioned that so many other states, both near here and around the country, have done this. So I guess I'm curious, like, why are why is Virginia only getting to this now? Like, do you think that there was some sort of you know barrier either in the General Assembly or just sort of among the industry writ large? <coughs> that, like, why now? I guess is my question. I'm not equipped to answer that. The answer is I don't know. But and I'm sure that uh, any of these gentlemen can answer that. But the fact that we're doing it now, if you just simply look at a map of the Eastern Seaboard of the United States, we are ideally situated smack dab in the center of the Eastern. Uh, seaboard, which uh, will hopefully attract a lot of business heretofore that hasn't been here. The, um, I, the there's a couple answers to that, and 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 one is the appropriators, which Delegate Anderson is one, are very conservative with Virginia's monies, and therefore comes our uh, constant high rating as a great state to do business in. The second answer to that, I would tell you, is that uh, for every dollar of surplus, there are five dollars of demand against that budget. So when you have a budget deficit of 1.5 billion, that demand for new money never goes away. And so there's a lot of competition. So that means that when um, you come to the legislature, you need to have your ducks in a row. Uh, thirdly, I would say, uh, this was a stars aligning thing. Thirdly, I would say that the VABA board uh, instituted in the last two years new leadership. 
uh, to take a far more proactive stand with public policy relating to, e uh, to, to uh, aviation, uh, a stand that is dynamically viewing aviation and its airports as an economic center of commerce for all communities. And it's not just in the support of those who fly and depend on flying for business, but for the creation of jobs. And I, and I think the leadership in Manassas will tell you what that means to this community. Uh, in that stand, AOPA and MBAA, the National Business Aviation Association, uh, have all been actively looking to create what I will call parity amongst the states, an even playing field because this is disruptive to states economically to watch things go back and forth. I will say to Virginia's benefit, we are centrally located on the eastern seaboard and we're a two and a half hour flight from almost anything, whether it's Dallas or Appleton, Wisconsin, so we can bring those businesses right here to Manassas, right to Richmond, right to Lynchburg, right to Roanoke, right to Danville. And we've got ample property to grow MROs anywhere in this Commonwealth. We are open for business. And uh, so it was, a, it, was a, it was an alignment of the stars in the right environment in a very conservative fiscal Commonwealth or state. And, and I, I got to tell you, it was a challenge because initially this bill made it to the subcommittee, one of the subcommittees of the House Finance Committee that does all the tax issues and it did not get reported out of that committee to the full committee, but we were so absolutely convinced of the dramatic economic impact of this bill that BUD, AOPA, the National Business Aircraft Association, and others marshaled their forces. We were able to convince the chairman of the full committee, Delegate Lee Ware of Powhatan, to pull it up to the full committee to be heard, and that's where it passed and made it to its floor to the House floor, over to the Senate, and the governor did sign it into law again. It's effective next July. Um, we have three appropriators from Prince William on the House Appropriations Committee. Myself, Delegate Lingenfelter, Republican of the 31st, and Delegate Luke Torian, Republican of the 5th, uh, Delegate Democrat of the 52nd District, and uh, Scott and uh, Luke were very supportive of that. And that's what pleased me was the bipartisan way in which it really it's very made bipartisan. It through. It really was, and I was very pleased by that. And uh, Rich, you mentioned as well um, that this had like a sunset provision in it, and so, or, or I guess at least, if not, you know, a sunset necessarily, then a chance for sunset. you to, to examine it that's at, at least. That's the terminology we Yeah, did. and so, you know, as you think about, you know, a couple of years out, um, you, you get a chance to sort of evaluate its impacts. I guess sort of what will you be looking for? Is it just like, is it having the economic impact that we're well, expecting? Is that the two points. It will be readily apparent because we will be getting feedback from the industry. There are there are professional associations such as the Virginia Aviation Business Association, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the Virginia Department of Aviation, and and the uh, the uh, uh, JLARC, the Joint Legislative Audit and Review Commission, has signaled their intent to follow it along because they were directed last year by legislative action, which the governor signed to track a number of economic development initiatives. And my understanding is they're gonna sweep that into their span of these various initiatives. That's right. Historically, Virginia legislature always put sunset uh, provisions onto uh, tax exemptions. But remember the four factors. Jobs created, jobs retained, new businesses, and, and tax increase revenues. Four provisions. Jobs created, jobs retained, businesses grown, created, tax revenues received. There's four categories we're gonna be judging against and watching very closely. The reason we went on a delayed enactment was to get it out of this budget cycle. So the Department of Taxation, Planning and Budget, the Governor's Office and the Legislature all had time to implement this 
and we had time to educate the community as this being out there. Brady, you had a question. You already started notifying your members on yes, YouTube, and what reaction are you getting? Excitement. Excitement. Yes. Yeah, our members are very excited about this. Uh, they respond positively anytime they, they can fly their aircraft to a state and uh, get work done on it, operate it there, and, uh, and have, have the taxes exempt uh, compared with other states. I mean, somewhere there's a number how many airplanes are registered in Virginia? Yeah. Correct? Yes, sir. I can get you the exact number. I'm guessing it's 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 an educated guess. It's 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 somewhere around the 2,400 number, but I, I can get you an exact number. I'll get your card and get you an exact number, uh, and it breaks into classifications. But I, I want to point the trends going on in aviation. Fewer and fewer people are flying as a hobby today, but you have more and more people. And I'll give you an example. You all know uh, former delegate Joe May of Leesburg is the perfect example who has two Cirrus SR-22s, used to be a Cessna 182, and, and then a rotorcraft, a helicopter, that he flies so he can move back and forth, not only between clients, but plants. That type of flying, I fly as a part of my business. I can be in Richmond at 7 a.m., at a 9 a.m. meeting in Norton, Virginia, for you, those of you who don't know where Norton is, it's in the far southwest. Then in Danville for a 11 or 12 o'clock or 12.30 meeting, if I have to be, I can be in Tidewater for a 4 o'clock meeting and home for dinner at 6. That's the agility that aviation gives a business today, and that's why you find more and more of these smaller aircraft being used for business today than they were, say, 10 years ago. The, the uh, other element is the same agility it gives corporate America, larger corporations, the ability to maneuver, move their people on time frames around the United States doing business. All of our businesses are no longer regional. And when I say regional, the five surrounding counties. We're all doing business statewide, multi-statewide, nationally and internationally and aviation is an integral part of that and the use of aviation assets add to that the dynamic that we've all experienced that fly commercial we're flying finding fewer and fewer connections in our commercial airports our smaller airports and all you have to do is look at roanoke look at lynchburg look look at danville no longer has commercial charlottesville still has commercial but those the competition for that and the pressures on the commercial airlines to fly profitably is becoming harder, which makes this a more viable tune, especially for smaller businesses and mid-side businesses to use in their growth and their planning. I don't know very much about airplanes, so let me ask you this. You know how a car, the dealers have a so-called, when you're supposed to take them in for maintenance, so on airplanes, what's the sort of standard that you take them in for maintenance? Every I mean, aircraft has a, uh, you want to go with that? You want uh, yeah, so it really depends on, on the, the, the size of the aircraft and the way it's being operated. Uh, but, but all aircraft have some kind of periodic maintenance. Required. But required, so not like, unlike a, a, a car, a ground vehicle, these are federal laws uh, requiring certain, op certain maintenance, certain replacements, repairs, refurbishments be done on those aircraft or they're grounded. On these piston aircraft right behind here, I don't see any jets out there. Standard is 2,000 hours on the engine. Time between overhaul he's talking Time about. Time between overhaul, 2,000 hours on the engine, and then an annual inspection that it must go under. If it's under what's called a Part 145, which is a charter, then that's, they, it, it, it pretty much goes into 100 hour inspections, which are, which are many overhauls, and that's required. That's why as pilots, we don't mind flying 12 year old or 20 year old aircraft because it's not the age of the aircraft, it's the maintenance of the aircraft. So the safety is paramount for us and it is all mandated and it's all subject to inspection. And the other thing, the, the um, A&P mechanics that work on those aircraft have to be um, FAA certified. So this is a federal license that these mechanics are getting 
Um, it's different than when you, you know, go to uh, learn how to repair cars or diesel engines. An aircraft mechanic has to go through 100, uh, 1,920 hours of training. Then they have to take a written, three written exams, and then they have to sit for an oral and practical for two days to be able to get their federal license. And this federal license allows them to work anywhere um, in the nation. But the interesting thing is because there is, there has been this tax, it has limited the amount of jobs we can send our new graduates to. We've had to send them to Appleton. We've had to send them to Kansas. So now with this job growth through this bill, we'll be able to allow our graduates, which are usually local people, to stay right here with their family and friends and be able to make a good living as an aviation maintenance technician. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, and we'll hang around for a while if you want to have a sidebar. Thanks a whole lot. Thank you. You want to talk about some other issues? Yes.